Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend. Welcome to the Monday broadcast. And actually, it's a Labor Day broadcast. If you are listening to the broadcast in its regularly scheduled format, this is Labor Day here in the United States. And we honor those who have really built up our nation by working hard at whatever profession they are dealing with. And if you're a hard worker, then my friend, I am grateful to you. I want to be a hard worker. Being a hard worker is one way we can show and worship God in our lives. Well, my Bible right now is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter and chapter 2. If you can, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, 2 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 10 here in just a moment. Along the way today, I will be giving some key things that you may want to jot down, so grab pen and paper. But with that pen and paper in hand, you'll be able to, at the end of the program, get our contact information. You'll be able to get our phone number and so on because I want you to contact us giving us your name and address. I want to send you something. I want to send you a free gift, which is a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. Now, if you don't know what a gospel tract is, I'm going to explain that here in just a moment. But please have your Bible ready, have pen and paper ready, and we want to uh, encourage each other in our time today in the Word of God. Let me lead into the Bible study this way. This afternoon, I received a phone call from Tampa, Florida. A lady there listened to our broadcast for the very first time and called for a sample packet. (laughs) I like this lady already. Now, after all was said and done, I asked her where she attended church. She told me she was having to look for a new church. When I asked why, she told me that her last two churches had gone soft on calling sin, sin. So she's looking for a church that preaches the gospel of love and grace, but also preaches the judgment of God on sin and ungodliness. In short, she's looking for a local church that preaches that hell is hot, God is holy, and Jesus is the humble Savior, humble enough to make and bridge a gulf between heaven and hell, making a way of escape for those of us who are sinners, and that's all of us. In walking through Second Peter, we have run headlong into a group of false teachers, and I've been calling them, by this term, I've been calling them apostates. Now, these teachers are headed for an awful fate of a holy judgment of God and tormenting in hell forever. But why? Why will God judge these apostates so severely? That's exactly where our passage brings us today. Get your Bible and join us there. I've got one of those gospel tracts in my hand today. Now, that word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's short enough, condensed enough that I can keep them in my shirt pocket. I've got a packet of them in my back pocket to have them handy. Uh, They're small enough you can put them in your purse. They're easy to carry. They're easy to have readily uh, available to hand out to people so that we can give to them the gospel because simply we cannot take the time to verbally tell the gospel to everyone we meet. The gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled Coupon Faith with a Question Mark. This is a track I wrote after meeting a lady in the grocery store who was buying over $70 worth of groceries but paying less than $20. Why? She was using all these coupons. She had placed faith in the coupons, and when I quizzed her, she knew nothing at all about the company that put the coupons out. Knew nothing at all. She trusted, though, what the coupons said. We take that and we say, if we can trust businesses and 
what they say in a coupon, certainly we can trust what God says in his word. And this gospel track, Coupon Faith, clearly lays out the gospel. Please be ready when at the end of the program, my announcer gives to you our mailing address, our phone number, our web address. Contact us, give us your name and address. We'll send you free of charge that sample packet. If you cannot stay to the end of the program, go to our website, which is Bible Tracks Inc. Dot O-R-G. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 10 says this, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise governments, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. This verse follows a statement that says this, that these are unjust people headed on the day of judgment to be punished. Now, friend, listen. Anybody, and I mean anybody who enjoys preaching on God's judgment on sinners, well, friend, if they enjoy that, their heart, their mind, their soul are out of whack with God. They have a skewed mind. We have to preach on God's judgment on sinners, but we must do it with tears in our eyes and anguish in our soul. Now, my outline for the uh, chapter 2 of Second Peter goes like this. Verses 1, 2, and 3, my key word is there, apostates. We label that apostates and their judgment. Secondly, verses 4 to 6, ancient judgments are given there. Then verses 7 through 9, and our anchor during apostasy. And now, verses 10 through 19 is a section I've entitled, Acts worthy of judgment. Acts worthy of judgment. As we walk through verses 10 to 17, we're going to see the way that these false teachers are, or we could call them the characteristics of how they are living. And then we're also going to see not only the way they're living, but the work they are doing. What are some of the key characteristics of these apostates that are listed here and talked about? Please remember that an apostate is a false teacher, but there's little more to the story. These false teachers have known and been taught the truth of God, but they've rejected it. They have willfully turned their back from truth and abandoned truth. And I'm going to be using a series of words, all beginning with the letters U-N, to walk through these qualities these characteristics of these false teachers that God is going to judge. Lord willing, we'll get to more, but if we get to just one today, that will be enough. Verse 10, on my key word is that word unclean. That's my U-N word, unclean, here based upon verse 10. Notice it says, but chiefly, or that means most of all, them that walk after the flesh in the lusts of uncleanness. Now, that word uncleanness means something that's contaminated. The emphasis here is on the morality of these false teachers. They live defiled or unclean lives. The word used here is a word that would have been used of a Jewish person if they, and wanting to go to worship, if they had touched a dead body, they would have been defiled. They could not go to worship because they're ceremonially unclean. By the way, you remember the story of the good Samaritan? You remember the priest and the Levite who did not help the wounded man? If they would have, they would have been ceremonially defiled and unable to do their temple assignment. But coming back here to 2 Peter 2, these false teachers are not ceremonially unclean. They are absolutely unclean inside and out morally. Look at those words again there in verse 10. They say that these false teachers live, and I'm quoting now, after the flesh in the lusts of uncleanness. That word lust is almost always used in a negative sense in the word of God. It refers to a strong passion. These teachers walked in lusts or strong passions that are unclean and made them unclean. But in the New Testament, that word lust is also used of passions that are good and correct. Sometimes we preachers, we can wax long and hard to our congregations about the lusts that are bad and sinful, but we fail to turn folk to the lusts that are good and godly. 
For instance, if I were to turn over to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, or go back to 1 Peter and chapter 1, there I would find that the Old Testament prophets had a passion, had a lust to understand the mysteries about which they were writing. So, having a lust to understand the Bible is a good lust. Amen? If I were to turn, secondly, over to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, there Jesus desired, or he lusted, the same word is used, he lusted to have the Passover meal with his disciples before he was crucified. So, secondly, lusting to be in close communion with other believers is a good and godly lust. Let me give you one more. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 6, there we read that our fleshly human nature has a strong passion or lust against our new nature, our new nature which is aided by the Holy Spirit. And conversely, the Holy Spirit has a lustful passion to war against our old human nature. That, friend, is a good passion. I am glad that the indwelling Holy Spirit that you and I, who are believers, have, I'm glad that the indwelling Holy Spirit is a passionate person about holiness. I need the help of a passionate person indwelling me to help me be holy, and so do you. Here is a wise takeaway from our studies so far. We need to be identifying unclean, contaminating lust. We've got to do that. We need to label such lust as being evil and unclean. We need to give no cord, no space to them in our lives. But please, let's not just hammer on the unclean lust. Let's help ourselves out. Let's help one another out and build by building into our lives the godly passions, the godly lusts. Let's develop those spiritual disciplines that help us participate with the Spirit of God in warring against our old drives, which want us to live to please our flesh and make us unclean. Dear Gospel Worker, if you know Christ as Savior, you're listening. I have a sense in my soul that every godly person, every born-again person wants to know how to tell the gospel, wants to be used by God to share the gospel and see people come to Christ. If you are that kind of a gospel worker, then you and I are going to be far more effective in our evangelism if we strengthen those godly passions which please God and that will weaken our old nature. My friend, if you're listening today and you think that if you, by conquering or holding down your sinful passions and lust, that will make you a better person, well, it will make you a more moral person, but you're doing that will not remove the sin stain off your soul. You becoming more morally upright is a good thing, especially if I'm your next door neighbor But you and I, by our actions and morality and religiosity, cannot remove the sin stain off our soul. Christ died and shed his blood. His blood is the only cleansing agent powerful enough to remove the sin stain. If you've never received him as your Savior, do so now, today. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.